David Lowe is a composer and music producer whose work comprises mainly of music for TV and radio. Just a few of the themes he's composed include BBC News, The One Show, Grand Designs, Country File, and the list just goes on and on and on. And he's on the line with us here today. How are you doing? Hey, I'm great, Toby. How are you doing today? Yes, I'm doing great. I'm not normally up at this time, but it's great to be here. Excellent. Nice to say hello to everybody listening as well. Yeah, of course. So it's interesting because before you went on to make the BBC News theme, you actually started out working for the BBC, not as a music person, but just as a kind of, what were you, an intern or something? Yeah, way back when. Um, I suppose it was even before they had interns and things, but yeah. uh, I was like 18, still at school. And I was uh, really interested in broadcasting and radio TV. And I was talking to a teacher about it. And he's, he knew somebody at the BBC. And he said, I'll give him a ring because um, mm -hmm. they have uh, guys your age in to help out the weekend. So yeah. lo and behold, he phoned him up and uh, in I went. And I absolutely loved it. It was brilliant, you know, um, learned all about radio production. And because we were at a place called Pebble Mill in Birmingham. It was this big broadcasting centre for the BBC. Yeah. And they did TV shows there, big network TV shows. They did like a, a daily magazine show. They had radio studios, music studios. So it was just a brilliant place to be. Mm. And um, I just knew from the minute I walked through the door, this is where I want to, this is my, what I want to do, you know. So it was a great, a great start. Yeah. And did you have a music bug at all when you worked at the BBC at that time? No, I suppose I, um, I'd i always had um, tunes floating around in my head, you know, like mm. as a kid and stuff. Music had always been there. And yeah. I doodled around on the piano and I always had that dream, of, like we all do, of be, you know, getting a hit in the charts, whatever yeah. it is, being, being in a band. Um, but um, I didn't take it seriously. I just thought that's just pretty much what everybody is the same, you know. So... Mm. Uh, um, I just I, I really focused on on the radio and the TV thing, and um, I learned all about sort of sound editing and production and and mixing, and then I started making little jingles up using sound effects and stuff and yeah. putting those together, and then I started dabbling around. I did a little couple of little music jingles as well, you know, but nothing mm. nothing too serious. So it was more about um, the sort of creative use of sound, I suppose, when I when I started, and yeah. I just found that I really um, I just took it, you know, I just loved it and just, just really um, took to it in a big way. And um, so the music came after that, really. Yeah. And do you remember what the first piece of music you ever composed was? I do. Um, mm. In fact, I think I've got it here. Well, yeah, it was great but, um, in radio. I learned all about sort of sound production and, and I used to put jingles together and things and spend hours in the studio um, after everyone had gone home, just sort of experimenting with sound effects like this. Five, just one, mixing... Four, <laughs> mixing sort of sounds together. Yeah. It was, it was, so it was really good fun. And um, the technology, of course, then was just, uh, just tape machines. There wasn't any sort of <laughs> digital technology. It was all analogue. Mm. So um, then, uh, so I suppose... The, the first tune that I wrote um, after after working there, I, I sort of got into uh, I started getting into music, and I bought I went out and bought a synthesizer, oh. and I thought, oh, wow, this is great! And and it was just at the time when the technology had started to come together, and you could actually put music together at home. And I got mm. this very basic multi-track uh, recorder that used to be on a like little cassette four-track uh, thing, and that was like a revelation. So I started putting songs together. Um, like this. So the quality still sounds all right. Even yeah. that was done, I think, sort of like 1983 or something like that. But um, and it was all like I was really into like Vangelis and all like flowery, oh, yeah. synthy stuff. So um, that was great fun. Yeah, definitely. And of course, before you went on to work on the BBC News theme as well, you had a bit of a flirt with. I don't know if you'd call it pop star because you were more behind the scenes, but you definitely had a hit single with t the band Touch and Go in the song, would you? That's right, yeah. So um, I'd sort of like been... Uh, I, I did my th first 
theme tune commissioned for telly in yeah. 1983. I was like 24, basically. Mm. And I thought, this is the way to go. So I was really set on writing theme tunes and I just focused on doing that. And because um, I'd sort of was in the BBC working freelance anyway, I'd, lo I'd always meet lots of people that would obviously want music. So it was a really yeah. good place to be. So I sort of built up a catalogue of, of stuff, but I always had this um, dream of um, getting a hit into the charts, you know, and doing something like that. And I, I got a little record deal with this record label uh, called Oval Music, and we were putting ideas together. And then uh, we talked about doing like a dance track, like a Latin dance track. And uh, there's quite a famous Latin track called Tequila, which sounds a bit like this. So I started playing around with adding some trumpet to that. Um, so I just came around, started playing with that idea, and it wasn't it wasn't really working. And then we yeah. think, let's strip it all back and just have it sort of really, really minimal, you know, and mm -hmm. um, sort of build it up. And let's see if we can find some little samples to go with it. So um, I'd done a sort of documentary called The Science of Sex about um, sort of sexual attraction and all the biology and stuff. And one of the sequences, they had this montage of people saying this. Um. I've noticed you around. I find you very attractive. Would you go to bed with me? <laughs> and uh, all sorts of different people. And I'd, I'd done that a couple of years earlier. And I, I suddenly remembered it. I thought, oh, yeah, there's that. I remember that. So it must have stuck in my head. And I went back to dig out the tape. And it was literally like, a, before. <laughs> you might not even remember, they were all VHS videotapes <laughs> that they used to send us to to work with the pictures. Mm -hmm. And I dug that out and, and plugged it in. And I, I got um, ran it to this bit. I thought, yeah, that sounds great. I've so I literally sampled that vocal off the um, off the VHS tape, and um, I started adding it into the um, I've over around. the groove, and yeah. then I just sort of built the groove up with a bit of bass. I find you very attractive. Um, and it was that um, that made it really sort of work the hesitancy. And I thought I'll build it up, and then the, the sort of punchline. Would you go to bed with me? I'll just come in with a massive sort of trumpet. Huge trumpet thing. So um, I got this trumpet player up called my mate called Jim, who's who's really brilliant. And um, I said, Jim, can you just jam over these chords? So I played him that that groove. And um, I said, just go and just jam, you know, do some jazz riffs over it. So he, he came up with loads of little jazz riffs like this. So over that over that four bar. So lots of riffs, and then after he'd gone, I, I listened all the way through. And I thought, picked out all his best little riffs, and then I found this one. I thought this is going to be the mother of all riffs, you know. So yeah. I took four of or four of his riffs and made this one mega riff, which was. Uh -huh. So it's, it's it's four separate little bits basically. It's like yeah. those four bits, and so you play them. Cool together and you get that one riff yeah. and I thought that's working really well so I put that over the chords I thought yeah that's working great you know and mm -hmm. uh, I thought it, was, it still sounded a little bit like not edgy enough so I changed yeah. the, the background chords to that which is sort of minor chords and then add it So it makes a heck of a difference, and it just sort of like nailed it for me. And I thought, well, there you go, that that's working. And yeah. um, so then I played that to my record company guy Charlie, and uh, with the, with all the. Would you go to bed with me? And um, he just went, congratulations, you've just got your first top ten single there. You know, <laughs> it was like, wow, really? And he said, yeah, it's, it's definitely that has definitely got something. Mm -hmm. And um, so then he went out, and um, you know, it's obviously. You need somebody to champion it, and he was mm. brilliant. And he just went out and just saw loads of people, and eventually got a record deal with uh, V2 Records. And um, and yeah, so nine, ten months later, after writing it, it got to number three in the charts, which yeah. was an amazing experience. Yeah, were you surprised that it managed to do so well? Well, we, um, I mean. Charlie, the record, he always had faith in it, and yeah. uh, more than me, really. I thought, no, it's, it's just not, 
it's not going to happen, you know. <laughs> and it was, um, but he had absolute faith, and he said, no, it will happen, it will happen. And, um, you know, we got to the point where we'd done it and we got the record deal. So bit by bit, it was, it was creeping closer. Mm. And um, he said, you know, it's it, it really is touch and go, whether it will happen or not. And, and so that's why we called it touch and go, because... Yeah. It's touching, you know, whether whether it will happen, and it's also the double meaning thing of, you know, which was all the whole sort of mood behind it, sort of cheeky double meaning uh, phrases. So, um, and then it got to um, the sort of getting it onto the top ten in those days. You had to be on. You still do now. You have to basically get onto Radio One mm. and be on their playlist and. Um, other radio stations had started playing it, but Radio 1 was still sort of hesitant yeah. about it. And then they finally said, oh, yeah, look, we'll have it as um, our record of the week. Um, <laughs> Simon Mayo show is producer. They both really liked it. Yeah. And so they said, yeah, no, we're going to play it as our record of the week. So, uh, we, oh, yeah, you know, this is, <laughs> oh, crikey, record of the week. So um, got to that point. And then the week they were due to play it, it was like, we were sitting there waiting, and then they said, "La, this is the record of the week. It's you too." You know, so they basically, um, right at the last minute, they sort of changed their mind. Wow. And um, so um, it's like, "Oh no!" And then the second week, uh, they said, "No, we're going to play it next week." And then they mm. played something different. So we've basically sort of almost given up hope then. Yeah. And then finally, um, they said, "No, we're definitely playing it next week." So all the way through, it was really sort of, um, you know. <laughs> and that, we just didn't know whether it was going to happen or not. And then as soon as they started playing it, it started snowballing and then the rest is history, really. And um, yeah. it literally was like a snowball and, and it just turned into this bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it was an, it was an amazing time. Yeah, definitely. And lo not long after that, you went on to work on what's probably your most famous composition, which is the BBC News theme. How did you get approached to work on that? Well, that, that, if that was the year after the, uh, the single came out. Um, yeah. So it was a pretty, you know, some, some people have their, their golden time, I think. And mm. uh, in a way, that was probably mine, you know, that, yeah. um, where all the hits are happening in, in one go. And uh, so I did the uh, single, and then the, the following year, um, I was just approached by the BBC and said, do you want to, um, are you happy to be on the short list of composers that we're going to consider to rebrand the BBC News? And I was like, let me think about that. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> you know, took about, um, and so, yeah, it didn't take much. So I said, yeah, obviously, that'd be absolutely amazing. I'd be completely honoured. So, um, and then it got, we got narrowed down to a short list and I went to meet um, Martin, who was the creative director. And he explained what the whole thing was about. And they said, basically, up until that point, um, all the BBC news shows had all got different theme tunes mm -hmm. and they all looked a bit different. They all sounded a bit different. And what he wanted to do was create this one single brand sound and brand it look for the BBC news. Yeah. Uh, to bring it f into the new millennium, you know, into the 2000s. And... Um, so that was the whole plan, and um, it was creating a look and a feel and everything. And so he said, and I want the music to, to, to be instantly recognisable, uh, yeah. to be completely different to any of pre, you know, that you, anything you've ever heard before. It's got to be completely different. And it's got to be, you know, unique and distinctive and, above all, memorable, you know. And as soon as you hear it, you've got to sort of instantly know what you're listening to. And um, so that was the brief. And uh, so we went off and I came up with a couple of demos and sent those in. And I thought, oh, no, he would definitely not got the job, you know. <laughs> um, the demo, I think I've got it here somewhere. Let's have a look. I'll play the original demo for the BBC News. So, um, and I just thought, no, I mean, it's completely different to what they got, but um, I, I wasn't convinced that it was going to win the job, you know. So, um, but lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, they phoned me up and said, oh, Martin wants to work with you on, as the composer on, on the news job, you know. I was like, oh, wow, incredible. So uh, I had to go th then for another meeting, and then he explained it all in more detail. He said, I want a really distinctive sound, 
instantly recognisable, instantly memorable, that in the first second, no matter how you use that sound, um, in, in you know, because it's going to be on the radio, it's going to be on TV, it's going to be in Scotland, it's going to be yeah. all different places. And um, they've all got to have a different feel and a, a different um, approach, but... Um, yeah it's got to be instantly recognisable. And then we were talking about sounds that he liked, and one of them was the pips, which is the mm. that sound, of which we all know, obviously. Yeah. And the BBC's all been using that. <clears throat> Next year, it's the 100th anniversary of the BBC. Can you believe it? 100 wow. years. Yeah. Um, so, and that sound was at the very start of the BBC, and it was from the Greenwich Observatory. Yeah. Um, and they basically connected two elect electric cable, you know, electrodes to the pendulum at Greenwich University because that was Greenwich Mean Time was the, obviously the, yeah. the world's time clock the most accurate and um, so when the pendulum swung it would hit the electric thing go beep 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 and they converted that into a, a sine wave and that's that was the sound of the pips and mm. um, so the BBC had been using that for for years you know and um, Martin said you know the pips is a really good example of a sound that, that is very Distinctive, and I thought, well, maybe we could use the pips, but add a dance beat to it. You know, yeah. it'd be really different. And I was thinking of this in my head as we were chatting, and then, um, you know, I'd build it up and um, add a bass line to it. And then he said, oh, well, I'd like some sort of drama, and and you know, it's got to have sort of drama and, and tension a bit. So I thought, big drums does that trick. You know, so I did those. And um, so I was thinking all this in my head as we were talking, uh, and he said, can you come back on Friday? And this was on a Wednesday. He said, can you come back on a fr Friday and play some ideas to the BBC team? Um, and I'll introduce you as the composer and then, you know, just bring in some initial ideas and see how we get on. So I was thinking, oh, I've got a day to do it, you know. So <laughs> I sort of rushed back home um, thinking, can, is that idea, is, is that too crazy? You know, is it too, is it too mad? Um, and I thought, no, I couldn't think of anything else that, that had that same, you know, that was st strong enough, really. Yeah. Um, the, the thing about that was it was a sort of distinctive idea, you know. It wasn't just a tune or anything. It was just an, it was an idea. So I thought, no, that, mm. that's going to be the one. So I sort of put it together when I got back on the Thursday and then did all the layers. I did some nice string chords underneath. So it's really like very, very minimal. It's basically like starts from that. There's only like yeah. four main layers. So there's the drums, the bass, the big drums, and then the strings. And so it's it's, it's quite sort of minimal, really, but it sounds big, you know. And I was yeah. thinking, oh, that's sort of working. And so I took that down to to the BBC team, and they Martin introduced me, and um, I uh, I played the idea. And um, they just looked at each other and went, I think you've done it. That's it. Wow. That's, the, that's, that's the one. That's absolutely perfect. Don't change it, you know. <laughs> and it's like an incredible moment, you know. That, that was the um, start of it, really. And so from that um, basic sort of idea of the pips and the, and the, the beat per second and the bass line, uh, those are the mm. core elements that I've used for the last, really, the last 22 years and all the other... Yeah versions that I've done um, the pips always are always the thing that, that give it that identity yeah and of course there are variations of the theme as well because you've got the headlines and the main titles and of course the countdown as well yeah that's right so you got yeah you got the headlines um, like that so um, and that's on a sort of running loop uh, which I think it's four minutes worth and yeah. it, you can trigger it any time you like so when you finish the headline you can trigger it again and even though the the breaks aren't that musical not in time it gives it a sense of um, urgency and sort of drama yeah. which is great because it's quite random so and there's little tags that go on the end of that so they do a headline talk like this over the headline and then there'd be a, a tag on the end so there's lots of little elements and so um, yeah we put that idea together and then we were putting the the, um, the tracks down for the news channel, which used to be News 24. And then right yeah. at the end of the afternoon, they said, 
oh, we need this um, one more thing. We just need this like minute countdown um, that we're going to use at the top of the hour, which we use as a sort of device to get us back to zero again. So if they're under running, they can play a minute's worth. And if they're over running, they can play five seconds or whatever. So it's a, mm. it's a thing to always get back to the, the top of the hour, you know. So they've got some uh, graphics to go with it. And they say it's just going to be like a clock counting down to zero. Can you do a piece of music that's a build-up, you know, to to, the, to getting to zero that we can fade in at any time? So I thought, oh, OK, all right. Um, and then I thought, OK, go, you, you, you go off and have a cup of tea and I'll, have, I'll see what I can come up with. And so I just literally put a groove down like this with on a loop of sort of electronic um, samples going on and then um, built up a series of chords that take you right up to the top of the hour but everything works under that one single note of the pit mm. so the pit stays the same but the chords build up underneath it you know, yeah. which is always a really nice effect And um, so that became, that was the sort of countdown. And it started, it started you know, it wasn't really a, a big thing when I did it. It was just another part of the package. Mm. But now, of course, that's become the sort of iconic part of the whole thing, which is, mm. I've done lots of different versions over, over time. And um, each one's have got a bit more sophisticated mm. and um, started adding more sort of melody to it. So it's the same chords as the very original, but mm. um, just arranged and, and produced over the years. Yeah, um, I was going to mention, because of course it has evolved over the years, how often are you kind of called back to progress it? Um, I think we've done it, um, I think it's about five times, I think, over the years maybe, yeah. or even more possibly. Um the last one was in 2013, which right. um, was so. That's probably the longest that the, this mm. one's been on without without changing it. But yeah. um, and I did separate versions for like BBC World News and B, and UK News. that were slightly mm. different ones. So it evolved pretty much the first ten years. You know, there were quite a few different variations, and then we got to 2013, and they had a really big rebrand of everything. Mm. Then. Um, yeah then pretty much that's the one that's stuck from then on, you know. Yeah. So um, it's quite interesting to do because every time I do it, I think, oh, oh, this is it, this is the ultimate one. And then they go, can you have? Can you remix it? <laughs> so <laughs> it's trying to find something with, with a new one that, that um, keeps it, you know, gives it the thing mm. that everybody knows, but adding something that obviously makes it sound a little bit different and a bit more up-to-date or whatever it is. Yeah. And of course, there's the different themes for the regional news as well. That's right. Yeah. So um, I think one of the, the interesting parts of it was trying to find a way of once we'd done the, the, uh, the main news, um, was trying to find a way of varying it, but keeping mm. it the same for the, it started off the regions and, and then Scotland, Ireland and Wales. And mm. um, it was a bit of a head scratcher for a for a while it took quite a quite a few days you know not even days a couple of weeks really of <laughs> trying different things to come up with a way of making them sound different but still retaining the identity and giving them an individual identity for each like Scotland Wales and Ireland without being cliched you know yeah. and um in the end it was quite simple really um there was a band that I'd been listening to you know at the time called Faithless and there's yeah. a track that they got called Take the Long Way Home. And I remember when I first started doing the, mu the news, that was quite inspiring, that track. I thought, yeah, I love, I love the way they've got that sort of beat going and sort of um, almost like um, not ravey things happening, but mm -hmm. a hint towards that. So um, I thought I like all that, did did bum 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 you know, all those sort of, sort of sounds, like those electronic sounds. Yeah. And... Um, so I just literally grabbed a load of like rave samples, basically, <laughs> and put them all together, and um, to create that sort of layer. Mm. And um, I um, then sort of just literally took the pips, and then for each different region and and the, and the nations, I just wrote a new tune effectively with the chords, but keeping all the sounds the same. So it was like the same band, 
hmm. but a different song if you see what i mean and that became the way to do it i thought that's the way yeah. to do it it's, it's keep all the sounds the same all the instrumentation but just change the chords underneath and um hmm. that will give it the identity for each one and um once i'd sort of landed on that as the way to do it then that's pretty much become the way that i do it all the time now yeah definitely and the theme itself has become a bit of a phenomenon really because people have made all sorts of remixes of it and have danced to it and just overall have thought it's a great tune i know it's incredible i'm so i'm thrilled you know obviously um Every time that happens, it's, it's just it's such an exciting thing for me to, I don't, yeah. you know, it just, it's just amazing that people have latched onto it so much. And um, some amazing remixes as well. The Dua Lipa one was oh, absolutely yeah. incredible, you know, so good. And uh, just the way people, you know, played along with it and um, the, the drumming weatherman and <laughs> it's, just been, it's just been great. I mean, it's, it's really um, a thrill to be, sort of almost like part of the British, you know, sort of fabric of, of Britain, you know, that it's become a sort of iconic thing that everyone knows is, is a really great feeling. And yeah. um, it's still the test of time, you know, so yeah. um, that there's a new audience coming up like you, you, you know, you probably weren't even born when it, when I first wrote yeah. it, you know, but um, you're now it's part of your landscape and everything. So that is yeah. a really, a really sort of thrilling thing. Yeah, and would you say that the news theme itself is kind of on par with the Pips now? Uh, what, as an iconic piece? Yeah. Of, I think the Pips will always be iconic in a way. Um, and um, I suppose um, it has become a sort of icon of the BBC in yeah. its own right, which which is, for me, is, is absolutely amazing because obviously when I started out, I, I was just... Worship the BBC was an amazing institution, and and I was it was all that all there ever was when I was a kid was the BBC, and ITV. And the BBC was massive, you know, for everybody in their lives. Yeah. And um, you know, I was enthralled by it and wanted to work at the BBC. So in the end, to be able to create a sort of thing that's become part of an icon of the BBC is is really uh, an amazing feeling. Yeah. Definitely. And of course, you're not just the newsman, but you've done many other themes as well, including The One Show. So how did you come up with that one? OK, yeah, so The One Show, that, that was an interesting one. Um, that was, They approached me about that um, late on, actually. They were looking for a, a theme and they really wanted to change gear at, at seven o'clock at night. You know, it was a new show and they wanted to sort of the news had been on and all the serious <laughs> stuff and now it was time to relax and put your feet up and go for the rest of the evening you know they wanted something that really changed the gear hmm. of, of evening viewing and at first they didn't ask me to to do it because i've done the news music they were a bit worried that <laughs> i'd sort of just make it sound too newsy maybe i don't know but um so they didn't approach me to start with but then obviously they did so um and they yeah. said they said can you put some ideas together and um so um, I start, so I started throwing lots of demos in at them, thinking, "Oh, this sounds like a really great job. I've got, to, I've got to get this job. I've got to get this job." So I uh, came up with some sort of ideas like this, for example. Yeah. Oh, and this was another one. Yeah. So these are all demos for the one show, basically. Yeah. And that one. So they all work as pieces of music, and um, but the, the producer, his name was Doug. He was amazing, and he said, "No, it's not quite, not quite got it, you know." And he kept mm. talking about something that it's got to be about people, you know. He said, "I, I need it to be about people," and um, so um, you know we were getting quite close. And then he said, "It's got to work at seven o'clock at night, you know. We got to, mm. we know it's got to sort of work as that switch over." So I thought, what I'll do is I put a mock up together of um, a junction at seven o'clock and I, I, so I came out of the news and so this is like you'd imagine it on TV at seven o'clock. Yeah. Safety on holiday, travelling abroad may come at a price. Get the real story tomorrow at 7.30. Now on BBC One, Watchdog. 
So I put the sort of junction together like that so they could hear what my demo would sound like yeah. in situ. And um, they, said, they said, oh, that's brilliant. You know, that, that's given us a real sort of insight. Um, mm. They said, tell you what, you've got the gig, but um, we won't pitch it anymore because there were other composers putting ideas in as well. Yeah. And uh, two or three other people, they said, well, you've got the job, um, but um, it's still not got the sound right, you know. So then... Um, he uh, had another chat to them, and then he, he played me. He said, I've got this song that I really like, you know. It's got a great sound, it's this one. Would you go to bed with me? <laughs> <laughs> so lo and behold, it was like, I said, oh, I did that, that's me, you know. And he said, no way. And he said, can you just make something like that? Um, I love that sound, but can you make it about people? And then all the way through, I became people, people. And then suddenly I thought, hang on a minute, this is the most obvious thing people is people isn't it so it's yeah. it's a choir or it's people singing and so i thought gospel choir you know would be great and something really celebratory and i got this sort of chord of gospel choir going ah like that so i, I grabbed that as a sample and then i started adding the trumpet to it Again, I made up a, a. I took the, the woodgy trumpet and made up a mega riff of lots of little bits of the da 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 da, <laughs> and just added that to the the choir. I think, oh, that's working. And then, so that's that's people and the trumpet that he likes. So I just started building that up. Drums. Bass line. Yeah. Guitar. Oh, that's piano, actually. <laughs> a guitar, yeah, here we go. There's a guitar. So I built the tune up like that, and um, I played that to them, and they said, that's, that's brilliant. We love it. Um, but can you make the choir sound a bit bigger? Um, <laughs> so I said, yeah, no problem. So I got um, some real singers around. I got the gospel singers around. Four singers came to my, to my studio, and I played them the, um, that sound. I said, can you, um, can you sing that, you know? And um, I said, what, have you got any words? And I said, well, try one, go one. So they went. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> so they, that, that's what they did. So put that over it. And um, so that, that's how that came together. And then I played that to them. They said, yeah, it's fantastic. Can we have more voices on it? <laughs> and by that time, they'd sort of gone. So um, I, I thought, oh, should I get them back? And I thought, no, I'm going to sing it. So I, I sang that one <laughs> in the middle. That one there, that's me going, what? Which takes, takes a bit of time to get to. Um, mm to sing it but um so that was really good fun yeah it's great yeah absolutely and there's a christmas version of the theme isn't there did you work on that or did they just there is record yeah, there's it a christmas themselves? version um and uh what we did for that um there was this event going on um yeah. which was a uh, kids choirs from schools all get together uh, and they have this mass um choir sing along with with lots of Children, you know, individual primary schools practice the tunes. Yeah. And then they all get together, and this was at the O2 Arena in Birmingham, and um, they all sing the same tunes together in this massive big thing. So there's like wow. 8,000 kids, you know. So I said, <laughs> I phoned up the, um, the musical director and said, is there any chance we could get the kids to go, what? <laughs> and um, he said, yeah, that sounds really good fun. So I, I suggested it to the one show team I said how about the biggest kids choir in the world going one for the Christmas <laughs> tune and they said yeah great idea so they came up and they, they filmed a bit of it and um, that's what we did and um, it was the the hardest thing was the the BBC um, production assistant that came along had to get 8,000 signatures signed oh, or co oh. contracts to the, the kids to allow it to happen you know so, yeah. that, so they had box falls of contracts that he had to take back to the BBC <laughs> which is quite funny but um so yeah that that um and that that became the sort of the one show Christmas theme 
Yeah, that's insane, actually, because you're hardly going to be able to make out one child's voice. So it's mad the I know, I know, yeah. It's interesting, yeah. 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 And of course, you did one of my favourite shows, Grand Designs, as well. That's right, yeah. Funnily enough, Grand Designs, um, the day that uh, I got the news, uh, well, I played them the news theme, like we were talking about earlier, yeah. and they said, yeah, that's the one. I had another meeting that day um, in town in London, and straight after, pretty much, the news meeting, and I went along to this this, this other meeting, and I said, oh, I just got the news meeting, you know. <laughs> And they were all like really excited. They said, oh, that's, that's amazing. I said, but we've got this. Um, so we got a show, they said, for Channel 4. And it's all about people building their own houses and things. And it's their dreams come true, you know. So we want a bit of dream come true music and a bit of sort of. And so I was so excited. I almost like this, I was, my head was buzzing. And I just, yeah. I was, as they were chatting, I suddenly thought, da da do do be do be do be do be do um, Tinkly bells and sort of waltz style. And um, almost Hollywood, you know, Disney-ish in a way. And um, mm. so I, I, I went home and put that together and, and literally that, that stuck. You know, the first idea I did for them, for Grand Designs, they liked it and that stuck. It's had the same life. It was born the same day as the news theme, you know, and, it, mm. and that's lasted the, the same time. Yeah, definitely. That's incredible. I guess that era was definitely your golden age. It was, yeah. And of course, Country File you did as well. When was that? Yeah, Country File is an interesting story because um, the very first uh, theme I did for Country File was way back in 1988 um, ah. when the programme first came out and that was from Birmingham. And uh, this was the original theme. That was the original theme for Country File back in 1988. Yeah. And um, from then on, I sort of did quite a few different ones for them over the years. This one was a, an update of that last one. And there was this one. And then this one, I think. We complete with barring sheep. Uh, <laughs> A little bit more pastoral that one, <laughs> and then there was a bit of a lull, and um, then they came uh, fully, uh, maybe nine years or so, and um, then they came back to me in like two thousand and seven, uh, and said, you know, we've got we'd re redoing the titles, and uh, do you want to come up with a with a theme, you know? So, um, and I went to see the graphics guys, and they were they were really cool guys in Bristol, and they said, yeah, we've got these aerial shots. The whole thing's going to be like a kite flying over beautiful aerial footage and you'll always see the little kite triangle of the shadow and that's ah. going to be the sort of emblem of country file and you see it going over beautiful um english countryside so can you make it all about sort of like flying and being in the air and like really <laughs> so I, this is the first sort of idea i put together and they sort of want it to be sort of obviously modern feeling and contemporary and stuff and so we sort of working. Sometimes you don't get, or quite often you don't get the idea straight away. It's, it's an yeah. evolution. So I got the sort of sound of it, but I hadn't quite hit the sort of the main tune. So as it evolved, I got to this version, which is very close to how it ended up, but the tune's a bit different, if you see what I mean. And they were sort of liking that, and then and then it's like, can work on it a bit more. So then it was, the tune emerged. So the backing and the, the instrumentation is the same, but I sort of came up with a melody. And um, there's a bit of fine tuning to that. And then, so that became the theme, you know, and uh, I think, was that 2007? I think it was. Um, and then, lo and behold, uh, Country Farm moved from being on a Sunday morning, this, this little show, mm -hmm. to Sunday night, you know, peak yeah. time viewing. And then it suddenly become this massive peak time show, yeah, which was really exciting. And then 
they said, well, can, can we make it sound a little bit more Sunday evening, you know, um, rather than sort of Sunday morning. <laughs> so I was thinking more orchestral and strings, you know, pastoral sounding. So um, building that up as, as a theme. So you add the, add the melody line over the top of that. So it's the same melody, but a different arrangement. Yeah. Which is the magic of music, really, that if, if you get a tune, you can do it in a million different ways, you know, and, and give it a, diff a million different moods. Yeah. But um, if, you, if you create a recognisable tune, um, it'll always sort of stand out in no matter how you do it. And that's always like a thrill when you get something that sort of works to do it in different ways like that. Yeah. And when you're writing these themes, is it the same process every time? Or Because I guess the BBC News theme was like brought up in a very different way to how you would mm. do something like Country Fire, right? That's right, yeah. I mean, it, it always starts... Most, most of the best ideas, in a way, they... They, you think of them before you sit down and try doing them. Um, so, um, you know, you come up with the idea in your head or what you want it to be sort of thing, and then you sit down and do it. And um, some ideas can be completely formed before you even sit down, so all you have to yeah. do is, like, put them together. And other ideas you've got half formed, and then you, mm. but you know where you want to go. So yeah. um, basically it builds up like that. So um, fortunately, I've always, like I said, from when I was a kid, I've always had tunes buzzing around in my head, you know, it's almost like, yeah. so coming up with melody lines has not never been too difficult for me. Um, so that's why I pretty much like writing instrumental music, you know, because it, it, mm. it comes much more naturally. But like writing lyrics and writing songs, I find I'm, I can't do at all, you know. So um, I find I'm... I'm in awe of people that can do that, but um, but the tunes bit for me is something that seems to just flow naturally. They just seem to pop out of thin air, you know, and you think, mm. oh, that, oh, that's a nice one, we'll try that. Yeah, and is it kind of annoying that TV themes, you don't really get enough time to do everything you want to? I, I really like them because they're like, mm. you've got 30 seconds, well, they used to be 30 seconds, they're almost yeah. down to 15 seconds now. Wow. And sometimes even shorter, you know. Yeah. And um, the days of the old theme tune have, uh, have sort of gone in a way. Um, but I like the idea that they come up with like a mini pop song almost yeah. in 15 seconds. And it's like a build up and introduction. It's got to start and finish. It's got to hit you. It's got to be memorable. And you've only got that time to do it. And so I quite enjoy having those little nuggets, you know, of time and uh, little graphic sequences um, are just in themselves are just really good fun to do. Yeah. And the fact that they've kind of shrunk in half over the years, is that because our attention spans are not what they used to be? I think so. I think it's because production teams, obviously, um, they want to get you into the show really quickly yeah. and um, they want to sort of keep your attention, yeah. So mm. as more and more channels are developed and there's more choice, they want to sort of keep you glued so they don't want to spend yeah. lots of time on a, on a title sequence where they could be getting into the show but having said yeah. that if you watch your know, netflix now or amazon um yeah. there's some it, it's almost changing back to how it was and some really beautiful mm. like long title sequences yeah. coming back with really really beautiful graphics and you know a lot of them have got songs and um vocals in them so it's mm. almost like changing the art form has stayed in a way and um so it's they're bringing that back, you know, mm. which is great. Yeah, although there is the still skip intro button on Netflix, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But real fans don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're great. I, lo I love intro music. I've always loved title themes and um, introductions. I think they're mm. just, you know, they're great. You know, they're just tiny little bits of tune and little mini art forms in themselves and the graphics are always really interesting as well you know so there's a little bit of entertainment they they're great 
Mm, definitely. And is it weird watching TV shows that you've composed the music for? Um, not really, because you sort of mm. you're in work mode in a way, and <laughs> um, you sort of it's still a thrill, you know. To yeah. especially with the news, it's a thrill to know that everybody knows it and everybody pretty much like you know from Boris Johnson to the Queen or <laughs> you know by Joe by and everybody's heard it at some point and yeah. um so that um and then you can speak to anybody you know that I meet generally and then when you tell them what you've done they all go oh, you know you know they can't <laughs> believe um so you're sort of anonymous until you tell them and then and then it's always a surprise when they know. So yeah. it's a real thrill to 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 have done that. Um but I suppose when I'm watching things, I'm I'm listening more technically in a way. I'm going, Oh, yeah. is that working? Is it the right volume? <laughs> Does it fit in? And um I remember when the single came out, Would You, and it was first on Radio One, I was I heard it in between two other records and I was yeah. thinking, Oh no, it's that the EQ sounds terrible. Ah, oh, I know. I think I think I was I was expecting a phone call from a BBC engineer telling me that they couldn't play it because <laughs> sonic quality wasn't good enough. You know, so yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting that. Yeah, but that could have been Radio One's EQ that made it sound like that. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And on a Monday night, of course, you've got the main news, the regional news, the one show, and then Panorama. So you've got a good couple of hours of you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite good fun. Yeah, pa Panorama was it was uh, obviously I didn't write the Panorama theme tune. Yeah, um, you weren't alive. That was written by yeah, um, uh, way back in I think it's nineteen fifties um, by a French composer, and I think it was actually um, part of a soundtrack to a movie. It's called uh, Aujourd'hui c'est toi, I think it's called, yeah. and um, so it was a soundtrack from a film, and that they'd obviously grabbed that little bit and. Um, used it as the panorama theme and that stuck you know for i mean that's got to be one of the longest running themes oh, yeah. on tv i think the it's moment. the longest running show of all time if you don't right. count the lord mayor show because that's, that's just incredible. an outside broadcast isn't it yeah 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 so um no so that, that's been that's been really good you know so again that was quite a thrill to to do that and uh, really enjoyable uh to put that one together yeah. and um Actually, it was just when I got my laptop computer as well and I was working, um, I'd finally honed down all my technology down down to u using the laptop. So I remember I was mixing that on sort of Boxing Day night, sitting in front of my fire <laughs> at home, you know, on my laptop with a pair of headphones on mixing the panorama theme. I thought that, that's yeah. quite a nice uh, place to be. Yeah, definitely. So what's next for you? Are you working on anything that you're allowed to tell us about? Um, yeah, I've got a couple of interesting projects on the go at the moment. I'm doing uh -huh. some music for um, the... There's a big global conference in Glasgow about the climate mm -hmm. and they're having a big TV debate uh, with all the world leaders. So I'm working right now on a piece of music for that and I'm working on some a new Arabic uh, news f uh, phone-in show and mm -hmm. uh, away from um, news, I'm doing... Um, I've just done an album of yoga music, which is oh. an alternative thing, um, which we're going to release on Spotify and um, all the YouTube and all the all the channels. You know, so if uh, you don't really have to like yoga to listen to it, but <laughs> it's sort of chill out music. So that's been really good fun, and uh, that's the sort of first album that I've done that's been released for quite a long time. So that's quite exciting mm -hmm. to see how that goes. Yeah, definitely. Well, where are we able to keep up to date with all your work and check out everything you've done over the years? Well, you can keep up to date uh, with it. I'm, I'm I'm a bit terrible, really. I don't update <laughs> things that often enough. I've really got to sit down and get on with it a bit more. Mm. But um, I've got a Facebook page, uh, davidlowmusic.com. Yeah. And I've got my website, www.davidlowmusic.com. So um, if I can get myself going, I'll, I'll start updating it a bit more and keep everybody up to date with what's going on. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks very much for coming on the show today. It's been great having you here. No problem at all. Really enjoyed it.